after about 15 minutes of playing to finally pick up a pair, I end up uh, trying to isolate the player to my right when he opens for 15. I make it 55 with a pair of fives. I don't know if that's a tell, but uh, it probably is. Get called in two spots, so I'm not loving it. I uh, was really hoping to either take it down or get it heads up, but we're going three ways to a flop with 168 in. Flop comes 6-6 six, six deuce, so very good flop for a pair of fives. Both players check it over to me. I'm going to have to deny equity from those over cards. I'm a little bit concerned someone might have a bigger pair, but we'll find out shortly. I side on a bet of $90. It's about half pot, maybe a little bit more. 90. Seat one tanks for about a minute and then decides to put in the call. Player to my right puts in the fold fairly quickly and we get to see a turn card heads up. Hoping that they keep it low and we catch the second best card in the deck, a six of hearts. So we fill up. We're still losing to those pairs bigger than ours, seven, eights, and nines. But we have ace, king, ace, queen, and those over cards kind of crushed. I decided to try to get value out of those over cards. If he has seven, eights, or nines, he probably isn't folding either way. But if I make this small enough, I think you might be calling with ace, king. Ace Queen. Maybe even something as weak as Ace Jack. So I decided an amount of 170. It's big enough to give them the wrong price for Ace King, Ace Queen, but it's also small enough to where if they want to gamble a little bit, they might be willing to put some money in. And he goes into the tank forever, and finally he decides. I'm putting in the call. Now, when he does, I'm really thinking that he has a hand like. Ace King is exactly is basically the exact hand I'm putting him on. He thinks that maybe I'm playing it that way, or maybe I just have uh, some air. River card comes as four clubs. We still have a great hand. The only thing I'm worried about: pocket sevens, pocket eights, pocket nines. But I only have $122 left. I jam it in. He's getting a really good price to call with his ace high. He thinks about it for a while. And uh, finally he decides on putting in the call. So I tell him I got a small full house. He says, nice hand, and he mucks his cards. Everyone at the table was a little bit shocked. The player in seat one said that he had pocket threes. And that was probably the only pair that, uh, you know, he put me on Ace King, I put him on Ace King. My pair was just a little bit bigger. Ace King will, thank you. We're at a new table, new players. There's a $6 straddle. I open for 20 with Ace 5 suited. I get one caller. It's really hard to tell what type of player this is because I just basically jumped into the game not too long ago. I don't have any current reads. I'm just assuming that they're calling with hands that are similar to mine, maybe a bunch of Broadway cards. Flop comes 9-8 deuce. So I do have a backdoor flush draw and a black backdoor straight draw. And this really shouldn't hit my opponent's range too hard unless he has something like Jack-10. I bet he puts in the call. I was planning to check back this turn card unless I picked up equity. A 5 came, so now I beat all the ace highs that are better than mine. So I decided, okay, we'll go ahead and fire one more bullet. Maybe he will give up with something like ace queen or ace jack. He thinks for a little bit and sticks in the call. So right now I'm thinking he probably has either a straight draw, a flush draw, or a pair bigger than mine. So when the river card comes to deuce, this is a perfect card to check back. I check it over to him. See if he missed his flush or his straight. When he checks it back, I think my five might be good until he rolls over ace nine of clubs. Meanwhile, at the other table, Andrew is starting to pick up some steam. He won a few pots. And uh, I'm a little concerned about our side bet. So I need to stick it in gear. And here we have a $10 bomb pot. Some tables were playing with a 15. This particular table only had a $10 bomb pot. I'm happy to see that everybody was checking this. I don't even know what I have yet. I peeked down. I got 6-7, so I got a gut shot. I'm going to take my free card and hope for a 9. Thank you very much. 
All right, people are checking again. I'm going, okay, I'm going to bet about $60 here, but before I had a chance, the player in seat one decides to bet for 50 Now, the player next to him puts in a quick call. He's most likely on some sort of draw. I just decided to put in the call. Yes, this is risky. Yes, I might be able to get more value out of hands like a pair in a straight draw or a pair in a flush draw or some sort of flush draw. All those things went through my mind, but I'm going to be a little conservative on bomb pots. First of all, bomb pots can be really scary because you can't put anyone on a hand. But in that situation, you really have to put in a raise. You need to protect your hand from draws. If they want to come along, make them pay for their draw. If they beat you, they beat you. If you get three bet, that's going to really suck. And you're going to have to cross that bridge when you get to it. But you got to put in a raise there. We end up getting four players willing to put in $50 to see the river card. Of course, in my mind, I'm just hoping to see a total and complete blank. And uh, we get the king of clubs. So that really doesn't change anything. If someone had queen jack or jack seven, we were beat all the way. And uh, the only thing it might do is slow down somebody from betting top pair. Anyway, it does end up getting checked around to me on the button. And uh, now I realize that I missed out value on the turn, but that's okay. I think I can squeeze a little bit out here. I decide on a half pot bet size of $140. I'm thinking if someone had two pair, they might call off. If someone even made like a pair of kings, they might be calling off. First player puts in the fold, second player says, so oh, I'll pay you off, and he ends up putting in the call. The other player behind said that if that player didn't call that he was going to because he thought I was uh, BSing him. So I ended up getting paid off on this one, showing down the straight. The other person in seat one flashed that he had a king, and we took this one down. Andrew said that he had some setbacks, so I'm looking pretty good on our little side bet going. There are several limpers. I look down at ace, king, and diamonds in the blind. Put in the race to 20. I only get one call up from the player in the hijack. Flop comes queen, jack, seven with one diamond. So we got a straight draw, two over cards, and a backdoor flush draw. I decided to bet out 20 just to see what they would do, and they put in a quick call. Now this player is fairly conservative, and I noticed that they have a tendency to want to call more than they would want to bet. So when the turn card comes as a deuce of hearts, it doesn't improve my hand any. I decided to check it to them. I'm pretty sure they'll check back a lot of their hands, and they do. River card comes as a five of hearts. I'm just hoping to get the showdown. I could bluff, but I decided to check because I'm hoping they had something like king-10 or 9-10. I roll over my ace-high, and they had ace-10. So we win this one at showdown with ace-high. I'm starting to get tired. I am not used to playing more than five hours in a session, and it was a long day already. We had to drive in. So I took a picture of, of my chip stack at this point because this is the spot where I would have probably have packed it up and went home because I'm tired. I don't think I'm going to be playing my A game anymore. So I was in for 500 and I got about $800 in profit at this point. But we still have to finish off this table and do one more. And, uh, you know, this it's past my bedtime. I know I'm an old man. I peek over at Andrew and he's still raking in chips. I'm going, man, these young guys, man, they got a lot of energy. How can they do this all day long? But you know, nothing wakes you up more than getting a pair of aces. So this is our last table. I'm on the button. I pick up aces. There is a raise to my right. I three bet to 50. And to my surprise, the small blind cold calls the 50. I'm really curious on what kind of hands he might be doing this with. I'm thinking pocket pairs, medium size, maybe something like ace queen, ace jack. King Queen? Not too sure, but we're going to go heads up to a flop with 121 in the pot. And the flop comes Jack 9 4 with two clubs. I do not have any clubs, and I think that Jacks and Nines are definitely in his range, so I decided to check this one back. Turn card comes as a King of Spades. He checks quickly. I decided to go for value. I don't think he did this with Pocket Kings. He could have Queen 10, of course. River card comes as a blank. I really think that maybe he has something like king-queen. 
maybe he'll pay me off? Well, I decided to find out. I put in a kind of a juicy Ace. bet, and he didn't think too long before flashing me that he had the Ace of Spades in his hand and that he was folding. So I'm thinking maybe he had Ace-10, Ace-Queen? I don't know, happy to take down this spot. I'm really, really tired at this point. This viewer, Randy, made it all the way out from Texas just for our meetup game. So I really do appreciate you making the trip and I'm very honored that you decided to come to our game. Well, I had the red aces last time. Let's see how the black aces do. There is an open to 15. The player to my direct right makes it 45. He is a uh, fairly conservative player in nature. He does, says he doesn't normally play this big. He likes to play the 1-2 game. But I've seen him play a few hands, and he seems to know what he's doing. I decided to make it 160. Now, granted, I don't 4-bet bluff very much at all, especially in a 1-3 game, or in this case, a 3-3 game. So this must look awfully strong. And the player in the small blind didn't think too long before putting in the call. And now it's back over to the other player who made it 15 to go. And he thinks for a little bit, and he finally decides on letting his hand go. The player next to me starts talking about how he watches my blog. And you can hear the table talk. I don't have a stack to call. It's either shove or hold. I watch his vlog, so I know he doesn't do this often. Oh, right? wait. With like a vlog. He only show you the good side of that. Hey, one out of ten times ace king. What does he do with ace king? But I told him that I'm a nit, so maybe he is making move on me. No, but it gives me two way, uh, two black. Two way. Now granted, he really shouldn't be talking about the hand and the action while there's still another player in the pot, but it's a meetup game, so it'll be what it'll be. Now, for the other player, when he called so quickly, I really put him on like a medium pocket pair or a hand like ace-king maybe king-queen. So when we see a flop and it comes out king-jack-six, rainbow, I, I was staring right at him, and unless this guy has the best poker face in the world, he did not hit a set on this flop. So I really take all that you know pocket jacks out. He really shouldn't have pocket kings in that spot. And he decides to do a little donk lead for $100. So this is where I really screw up the hand. No, I didn't fold, but it was almost as bad. Um, in my mind, I knew he didn't have a set, and I thought that he was just betting small, either to get a free or cheap card uh, to try to hit his set with something like 10s or 9s or 8s, or he probably had a hand like ace-king or king-queen. I didn't think there would be calling all in with a raise with pocket 8s or 9s or 10s, but if he had ace-king or king-queen, I thought he was, would be more willing to call off for his entire stack. So that's what I did. I jammed. And looking back on this, this is totally the wrong thing to do. I should be betting this just like I did on that very first hand. I should give him the wrong price to continue with all his pocket pairs, the wrong price to continue with second pair, the wrong price to continue with even top pair. Just. I really needed to keep him in the pot and try to extract more value. Instead, I froze him out. I got him to fold a weaker hand that he might have been willing to gamble with for another three or four hundred dollars. Anyway, really bad play on my part. I'm going to blame it on being tired. As I said, I know I wasn't playing my A game at this point, and I would say I wouldn't even play in my B or C game. This is a really bad mistake on my part. Lost a lot of value, or I should say, a lot of potential value from this particular hand. He puts in the fold, and then the player to my right told me that uh, he folded pocket jacks because he thought that I had him beat. And I told him, well, that's the good fold on his part, even though he got there. 
After finding my way to the cage and cashing out, uh, we gathered for a little photo op with some of the uh, people who participated in the meetup game. There were still two games going at the time, and a lot of the players were still active in that game, so they couldn't really join us for the photo. But it was a really good time. I'm very happy that everyone came out to support the vloggers, and I'm sure that uh, they also enjoyed the venue over at Lucky Chances Casino. Big shout out to uh, the GM, Dustin Chase, for taking care of this whole thing. Uh, Mike Sweeney for arranging everything with Andrew. And for Joni and Bryce, the floor people that took care of us while we were there, they did a great job, and all the staff over at Lucky Chances Casino. So I can't complain about the results of the day. Was in for 500, out for 1790. So a pretty good win for me. Uh, six hours of play, a very long day for me also. Andrew and I and our, our significant others went out for dinner, and I didn't get to my hotel room until after midnight. It took me a day or two to recover. As I said, I'm pretty old. When I got home, I had a happy greeting from Zeus. He came over to check out this, hear about the results of the game. He was disappointed in my play with that uh, black pocket aces, but uh, he forgave me as soon as I took him for a walk. And for the results of our side bet, you might ask why I'm standing next to a Joe Montana jersey. And it's beautifully framed. Had this for a very long time. Very proud of it. But, you know, it might, might just be second place now because I won a Lock It Up t-shirt from Andrew. We had a little side bet, and this baby is all mine now. I know Joe's pretty good, famous guy, but, man, this trophy, I, I, I would frame it, but instead, I'm going to wear it. I'm going to wear it all over the place because, like, Come on, how often do you outdo Andrew Locke at a poker table? Thanks for watching, guys. Really do appreciate your support. Until next time, good luck at the tables.